We got the package! Of course. Lots of it. We would love to lay a subfloor underneath the flooring we're going to install, the bamboo flooring, but because we're a little bit taller, we've only got so much headspace to spare. You're a little bit taller. You're a little bit taller too. <laughs> I could deal with the headspace. With your puff, it's a little bit taller. <laughs> <laughs> and so, our best alternative to the subfloor was to purchase a cork to use as an underlayment for the flooring. Um, it's got a reasonable R value, it's a good sound barrier. Um, and spongy. Spongy, it's good on the Maybe. knees. Um, and sustainable. Sustainable product. Um, I feel pretty good about it. I believe it's water resistant as well. Um, so it's a good quality product. It's a sustainable product and it'll be easy to put down and cut to size around the wheel wells and whatnot. Um, so that's why we've gone with Cork. And so after talking with a lot of different people, it seems like it'll be a, you know, given the circumstances, it's a good product to use here. So we're gonna try the Cork and then put the bamboo on top of it. So we've gotten the Cork, we purchased some adhesive. And so whenever we get time, we're gonna jump on it. Um, cutting this to size and putting down the adhesive underneath to adhere it to the metal and going from there. So yeah, exciting. Yeah, we're gonna put it all over the floor, except for the wheel beds, which we'll box out and then reuse some of the insulation that we saved from the ceiling um, to fill up those spaces there. And uh, yeah. Babe, how much was it? Um. To cover 200 square feet, it was um, $150. So that's basically our floor insulation cost. They shipped it to our house for free and... Oh, sweet. I didn't know that. Yeah, and it's a quarter inch thick. From um, Home Depot? Um, from the Home Depot website. Yeah. yeah, just ordered it online. So this is just a sample of some of the flooring that we're looking at. It's made out of bamboo and it has kind of like a wavy effect on the surface. We don't know if this is going to be the color that we choose, but at least it's a good thickness, maybe like half an inch thick. Um, and it's tongue and groove, so we'll float it over top of the cork and potentially glue it down. Like this is one of those jobs where like you'll start and you'll think you're doing it the best way and then by the end of the project you find the best way to do it. Um, but I'm going to measure it out um, and cut pieces, lay them down and then we're going to glue them all to the ground. Nice and it's brown. Yeah, those look better too. Bus is on a slight like incline, slight hill. So I'm using this piece of wood to stop this roll from coming back onto me. And then I'm using this other piece of wood here to hold it down but because it's been on a roll it kind of like comes up on its own and when I take my measurement here it's not quite accurate unless I have something holding it down here so I've just been lining everything up and taking three measurements on each like third um, and then cutting twice with the razor blade um, and then kind of like gently ripping it I have to do it really slowly because 
um, otherwise the cord kind of rips where you don't want it to rip. After that, when I'm laying it down on the bus or in the bus, I'm putting it upside down so when it curves, it's curving like this. So the more we walk on it, hopefully the more flat it gets, as well as once we start putting wood and everything else on top, it's gonna weigh it down so it's flat again. Good word. maybe a negative about this cork is that it's really fragile um, it's really easy to break it um, whether you get it caught on the bus and you're pulling too hard or if you accidentally step on it or choke on it which has happened um, it's yeah it's fragile so this is what happens which just means that there's another seam where um, it won't be as insulated as if it were the entire sheet without any breaks um, it just affects the efficiency of it so that's the one downside so i think we finalized the design pretty much but i'm going to show you how much sketching we went through before we got to the final design because it's kind of crazy so dun, 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 dun. this isn't even all of it but we have like one two three four five six designs before we came up with the final one which looks something like this these are the two sides which this is upside down so this is the door, sofa, shelving, kitchen, bathroom, bedroom. And then in reverse, bedroom, closet, um, fridge, cooker, kitchen, dining space, and then a workspace for all my crafty gear. All that good stuff. So hopefully it comes together pretty nice. We've got some storage on top as well. All right, so we're gonna tape them out. Uh, tape out like the design and the layout of the floor onto the cork and Justin is going to keep gluing because the glue that we used did not really work very well. So we bought some spray glue. Let's see if it works babe. Multi-purpose adhesive. Great. Yeah we got this this glue in a gun that was supposed to be for all weather types because um, it's really cold here right now. Um, and this stuff, you, 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 it was like in a, a gun. It's like not even dry. It's not even dry on here. So this stuff was no bueno. This stuff supposedly works on metals. I don't know. When it really comes to adhesive, I don't know that it's 100% necessary, but I'm very, I'm being really anal about wanting to glue this stuff down so it doesn't fold up or anything of that nature. Yeah, we have some like bubbles where it's coming up here. Yeah, and that just annoys it's not the totally crap flat out of me. To I hate it. So, this stuff is a spray adhesive. Um, supposedly you spray it and you wait a few seconds until the glue gets tacky and then you put it down. So we're gonna see. Keep going. Do you label each section? Yeah. You 